Hey there, Steve here, hope you're doing well. I often get asked by viewers of the channel, how do I know if I'm ready to play math rock? What should I know in order to play math rock? Am I good enough to play math rock? If you do have these questions, you're not alone. While there are no definitive answers, I believe I want to give you some information in this video that's going to give you a clearer understanding of your current ability and a clearer path of what you need to learn into it to best assist you in learning, playing and writing math rock style songs. As this is quite an undertaking, as you can imagine, I've decided to divide this uh, into three Three episodes. So in the first episode today we're going to look at the what I recommend as the techniques that you need to learn in order to best assist you in playing math rock. In a later video we'll look at some of the recommended music theory that's going to assist you, help you learning those math rock ideas, speeding up that process basically. And lastly I want to do a video where I introduce some kind of self-assessment exercises where you can check your progress. So to continue with part one the following are recommended guitar techniques for best assisting you in learning, playing and writing math rock guitar styles. So to begin with, I've gone with alternate picking. I find this to be one of the most fundamental picking techniques and it's one of the things that we should really learn first. So this is the action of picking in an up and down pattern. The motion should come from your wrist and there shouldn't really be any tension there. So if you're getting any tension, you might want to slow down a bit. The aim is to minimize your movements for better precision and for increased speed. So moving on next, we have legato techniques. So this is the practice of playing in a smoother like manner. I find this one incredibly useful, especially when we're going to play some of those really tricky math rock riffs. So instead of picking every note, you know, we can hammer on pull off onto notes, for example. Um, we can also use slides as well, so you'll want to work on that. And to continue with legato, I'm going to lump in bends with this. The key with this technique is to use other things to help you bend to support and make that bend easier, and also to practice bending to the correct pitch. So moving on to muting. So this is an often overlooked technique by many, but I think it's one of the most important techniques the guitarist should develop. This is a large part of what will make your playing sound so much more clearer. Therefore, it will sound so much more adept sounding. And with the complex riffs and ideas that we want to learn, we want to write in math rock, this is even, even more so important. So muting is also an incredibly important technique to develop when finger tapping, to mute that unwanted string ring. So what I like to do is use the underside of my index finger on my fretting hand to basically make my tapping sound as clean as possible. So moving on to what I consider one of the three essential techniques for math rock, so finger picking. And this is a really important technique to learn if you want to play like Covet and TTNG and so on. The fast flowing riffs that they play are made possible by the extra digits you have available to you. To get started with this technique, I would like you to poise your palm and wrist in a position where you can comfortably use your fingers and thumb to pluck each string. To help you become familiar with the feeling of using your fingers, I recommend learning a number of beginner-oriented picking pattern exercises. If you are interested in learning some beginner picking pattern styles, especially within more of the math rock vein, then I do recommend my math rock guitar techniques book. A bit of a shameless plug, but I think that's one of the best places you're going to get that essential information. So moving on to what I consider the second essential technique for math rock guitarists is hybrid picking. So this is using a pick and fingers at the same time. And it's usually found more by the proggy influenced math rock bands and it's used by guitarists such as Mario and Eric of Chan and Tim and Scott of Polyphia to great effect. It's useful for string skipping, so jumping over strings, and for achieving finger picking like effects but still being able to use your pick at the same time. So basically it provides the best of both worlds. You can also use it to achieve that finger plucking sound that you can with finger picking versus you know the sound you're going to get when you rake a pick over the strings. Again, if you want some exercises for this, another shameless plug, there's plenty of those in my book. So moving on to the last of the considered essential math rock techniques. A lot of you know that this is a heavily associated technique with the style of math rock. In fact, when you know, you're asked what defines math rock, a lot of people will um, usually mention this technique. It's used a ton by Mafi style bands in varying different approaches. So even if you're like myself and you're not enjoying the over the top whittling finger tapping math rock bands all the time, there are more subtle, subtle uses for this technique. So it's well worth investing the time to develop this technique. 
Some quick tips, try to anchor your thumb on the side of the neck when you're not using a pick, this will help with stability. Use the underside of your index finger as I mentioned in the muting section. This is essential for cleaning up what you're playing. And lastly, pay attention to your finger selection. It's going to be much more natural on your fretting hand which fingers you know to choose to tap however with our strumming hand a lot of the time you know it's not used to being on the fretboard so you really need to think about how you can best use your index middle ring and your little finger in some cases to uh, play certain riffs again there's lots of useful exercises in my math rock book and also Marcus Mena of the band standards is a tapping wizard He's much more adept at this uh, this technique than I am. And he has a book, Compositional Guitar Tapping, a workbook. And I highly recommend that book too. So there are plenty of other considerations, other techniques that we should consider. For example, we should be working on something called our finger independence. Um, we should be working on our dynamics, on our timing, playing with other musicians. The list goes on and on. So I just wanted to give you some essential uh, techniques for this video that I believe you should be working on but um, it's worth well worth investing the time into these other techniques because they are going to make it easier for you to learn math rock but they're also going to develop you into a more of an adept musician and also more importantly they're going to help assist you in creating your individual voice on the guitar. So to assist you in some of those other considerations one of my favorite books is this uh, creative guitar by Guthrie Govan. He's more of um, you know, a shreddy style guitar, but this book is an incredibly useful, it's got a wealth of information about more of those beginner style techniques. So highly recommend that one for helping you there. So that's going to be it for this one. If you have any other considerations, if you have any other, any other information you want to input, I really want to help each other out here. So please put those in the comments below. If you have any questions, again, put those in the comments below and I'll get back to you ASAP. I want to say thank you very much to the patrons that support the channel. If you do want to pick up a copy of my math rock book, I'm just trying to reach it down at the side here. There's a bit of a pile of books here. Um, you know, this one, I, I printed it out. Uh, then there's links for that down below in the description. As always, thank you for watching. See you in the next episode. Goodbye.